And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Michael Mayhood, who during his near-death experience saw everything all at once. And today we're going to learn about it. Michael, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for inviting me. If you don't mind, Michael, let's just start on the day that it happened and go from there. It happened on September 10th of 2021. I was enjoying the sunshine on the front porch. Um, I had um, closed my eyes and then kind of tried to bask in the sunlight and um, meditate. First time really actually experiencing deep meditation. Um, in the darkness with my eyes closed, I could hear the neighbor mowing his lawn. And then it got dimmer and dimmer. And then I was completely out. I actually really don't know how long I was out for. Um, the last time I looked at the clock was 6 p.m. I got up. And I was like lost in thought, like deep lost in thought. Um, it felt like I was looping in time. I've never experienced anything like it. Um, I walked through the house and though it got, the thoughts were darker. It, I could, it's hard, very hard to explain. Um, I tried to compose myself and then I found my way upstairs to my bedroom and it was, I could hear a voice that wasn't my own going, you know, to end this being trapped in this labyrinth. Um, you have to kill yourself. And I'm like, and it's like, I was it's fighting, fighting. And then all of a sudden, I don't remember anything after that. Um, I blacked out. And when I regained consciousness, it was almost as I was um, seeing myself from the outside, having this internal fight. Um, I was, it was, oh, it was, um, I could hear the vo like voices and then the, um, the, back and forth fighting. And then at that moment, I felt that I knew that it was almost like a possession. I must have opened myself up totally and not knowingly that I did. Um, after a while, I kind of pull myself out of this darkness and see, like seeing myself yell and scream. And um, I got on my hands, I was on the ground and I got onto my hands and knees and I vomited. And as I was, I couldn't even stand, I started crawling to the bathroom about halfway to the bathroom in the hallway I felt hands grab me by the shoulders and drag me across the carpet and into the bathroom and a hand, another hand grabbing the back of my head and pushing me into the toilet and I could feel um, grips around my arms, my legs, holding me down into the water. And then the last thing before 
my the near death, death experience actually happened was just seeing my like seeing the bottom of a toilet bowl as I was drowning. Um, then um, I felt my body go limp and then everything went dark and then it stayed dark. I was still conscious. I could still feel my, I wasn't in, no longer in my body, but I could still feel my individualism. And then it felt like I was in the, this void, this darkness for a really, really long time. And I started to feel panic going, oh, this is it. <laughs> This is all that's that's where it all ends is just darkness. Um, I was alone. And. If it, it felt like I was being. It was it felt like I was suspended in motionless nothing. And then I felt a. Like it started to tug me forward, forward, and then it got faster and faster until I was overlooking myself, slumped over on the ground, and that's when I go, "That's me. I'm dead." <laughs> and then I, like a rocket, I sped through all through um, the sky until I saw the orb of Earth below me. And I kept on continuing forward past stars, galaxies, different planets. And then I ended in this nebulous cloud. And then slowly, I started to be sucked into the her event horizon of a black hole. And that's when my current life flashed before my eyes. And then all my past lives started flashing past. Um, And the, the weird thing was, is that all in these past lives and the current, my story was always the same. There was nothing different. Um, and my name was always Michael, which was strange because I just recently found out that my original name wasn't supposed to be Michael. <laughs> It, it, they just said, oh, that it, that name just popped in at the last minute. Um, but um, as I'm falling, it almost reminded me of, um, I think it was Plato, the, the fire in the cave analogy, um, like a lone astronaut falling through the black hole and you can only see a, ahead of you and not what's behind. And that's what it was like. Um, it was, yes, it was, it was just mind, it was mind opening. Um, then um, as I uh, was going through past lives, current lives, um, as I said before, it was, like my my story, the my life story is always the same. Um, that's all. That's how I can describe that. How did you come back? Um, I really don't know how I came back. Um, they never. I did hear. I would imagine was the voice of God. Um, but uh, saying that you have to go back and it was like a full force 
and I woke, I just sporadically woke up and my head was still inside drowning at that point, but I don't know how long I was there. Um, but it felt like I was there for lifetimes. Would you say that the cause of your death was due to an, an attack by demons? Um, I don't know. I, I, it, I believe that there are ev- there's evils in the world, but my logic brain at that point couldn't wrap, could not wrap my head around it. Um, I was at a very vulnerable point, um, but um, due to a recent death in the family, I mean, I guess, I guess it could have. I mean, it seems like you were physically forced into this. Yes. And you yep. were hearing voices talking. Yeah. I know you, I don't think you saw any demons, but I'm just going from, you know. Oh, no, I, I didn't see, I didn't see anything, but it was, but it was like all playing out in my mind. Um, yeah, I'm. I can't say that I could say that I was clinically deceased mm-hmm. at any point because I was the only one home. And who are you going to tell? Right. I mean, I if I if I that never happened to me, I would never say that would be true. <laughs> it, to me, it was just off. It was beyond my comprehension. Is there any backstory or something that happened earlier that day that perhaps we're leaving out that might give us some more information on why this happened? As I said before, I was in, um, I just uh, experienced a very close loss. Um, but other than that, there was nothing extraordinary about the day. I, mm-hmm. uh, um, I have had in the past, like within the past six months, I started to try to, I've always lived in a a bubble and um, I wanted to um, more express myself. So I started seeing a close friend of mine who is in the psychic realm. And um, we started talking and learning about certain things, but, um, which opened my mind more to the possibilities of the unexplained. Um, we, just, it, w- it was a nice conversations, but um, nothing, w- nothing that I could think of caused that. <laughs> there was a first voice that you heard. Mm-hmm. I think that was even the one that said that you you should end your life. Yes. Was that a male or a female voice? It was a male voice. Was it recognizable at all? No, it was not recognizable. It was a deep, gruddling sound voice. Um, but no, it was not. Since your NDE, have you had any contact with those entities? Yes, through um, dreams. Do you see them in your dreams or just hear the voices again? Just the voices. Hmm. Do you have any idea at this point who they are? Not the ones that were telling me to do self-harm. These are the ones that, the good ones, (laughs) um, they kind of showed me things. mostly how our society and how we're moving forward in our futures. Um, There has to do a lot with um, how we interpret um, like religious values here. Some things are very convoluted to fit the men in power. Um, 
but nothing that yeah i still I, i've heard them but in dreams but nothing as horrible as what put me there <laughs> you mentioned that your story is the same throughout each lifetime yeah. what is your story i am meant it was uh i was meant i was placed here to get the truth out um at, like ever since the near death i've experienced deja vu almost every single day and it's so intense to the point it feels like we've had this conversation before <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but um yeah um uh, i'm supposed to share my my experience and just get it out there um always question everything seek the truth because the truth is not always there can you tell us about some of the past lives that you've had one was in the 1500 1500s um uh like very studious reading and sharing knowledge and then that's almost all of the past lives um some areas people were afraid of that knowledge so they got rid of me um but it's always the same gain the knowledge share the knowledge whether you're accepted or not what do you think is the significance of your name michael I've never really thought of it, the significance. I know the biblical significance of it, but I've never ever like I've never felt that tied to a higher a higher being, um, as the name suggests. <laughs> How did you change after this experience? It made me my eye uh, like that. No, now that I know that everything is everything it made me a happier person um an understanding of what's going on when you say everything is everything do you mean that like literally everything is energy yes yeah um i even during the the experience and then all the information that was given Um, They even shared that um, the, even our imagination is a primitive form of channeling. Here on this earth, we are there, um, we're material, and then we can manifest that material into something being. And that even goes for writing a book. As it was an idea that you turned into a physical item and it lives. When you saw your current life and all your other lives, do you feel it was like a life review or just kind of seeing all your lives at once? There was a life review of the current one. And then, then I was shown the, all the others. Um, so yes, that, that part yes the first part was definitely a life review did you come to any conclusions or ideas after you discovered that your story is the same story life after life not really um i mean the ideas popped into my head but they're to me they sound absurd (laughs) I mean, who could take anyone really seriously with that kind of, um, my name means who is like the Lord, but I am no God type of thing. So I've never thought of me that way. (laughs) Do you think that spreading this knowledge is a lesson that you somehow haven't learned life after life and that's why you keep coming back or do you think it's your purpose each time to come spread information i think it's um both actually i'm supposed to spread it spread the truth and yeah 
I think it was, I think it is both. Has the memory of this experience faded over time? Recently it has. But every time I share something from it, it slowly drains from memory. When you were experiencing the black hole and space and the cosmos, was that experience just as real as you and I sitting here, or was it more real or dreamlike? Very more real. It was... Even now, the world seems a little 3D, <laughs> but... There, it was beyond anything. After your NDE, did you get stressed out or, you know, like have PTSD-like symptoms? Yes. Yeah, I got m more nervous after after the, the event. I To the point where I never really told anybody. I've told three people, and that was it. And most of it wasn't the whole story, especially how it happened. <laughs> there, um, but yeah, no, I kept that. I kept it very secret until now. <laughs> how did those people react? The ones that I knew that could um, get the info. I get. I went by based on how much information they could take. <laughs> um, so the ones that I gave a little bit more information to seem to really grasp what happened. The other couple, the other one, it was a little bit more, I held back. <laughs> Do you fear death at all? I did at first. I don't anymore. Do you think you're still processing this experience? Oh, yes. <laughs> Very much so. Um, I've been, I've had, I have like eight journals filled with step by all the timeline, try to get through. But, um, and that's the problem is that there's no time on the other side. <laughs> and when everything just goes right into your brain, you can't, it's hard to keep it all tra in, in track. Since your NDE, have you noticed that you have any new abilities that you didn't have prior? Um, I definitely can. I seem to channel, and it comes out in the form of painting. I have um, dabbled in painting before, but I've never enjoyed it. But now that I've been painting, it's almost, I'm channeling things I saw onto the canvas. Saw during your NDE? Yes. Yeah. Do you have any paintings completed? I do, yes. Can you show us some? Yeah, I'll try. That'd be great. <laughs> this is a mini one that I did. Um, this is where, um, when I um, saw the presence of God. But God is a being, but I think they it transforms into something recognizable. Um, let's see here. While you're getting that up, I don't remember you seeing God. I thought maybe you... No, I did not say that. I saw Christ and God, but I could not see their faces mm -hmm. because we don't know what their faces look like, yeah. um, truly. Um, let's see here. Did you see them after you entered the, the black hole? Yes. Yeah. And, and during, it was as of like going through the black hole and you're going, you almost travel the, um, the, uh, event horizon. That's where time is. It's like almost like a, like a record player. And then you're traveling through all time at once. That's the point where you saw them, but just probably as light or energy beings. And then God and or Jesus said, you have to go back. Yes. Yeah. And so that is God? Well, that's how I would picture him. But then at this moment, I felt utter bliss before I returned. Christ was almost like an outline 
like if you had when my when I take my glasses off, I can't see faces. It's all blurred. Mm -hmm. And that that's what I saw the outline of what we think he looks like, but I couldn't see facial features. Um, what another one um, was when the moment I actually what came out of the experience, it was my dog on top of my chest barking at me <laughs> like like trying to wake me up yeah your dog was um, trying to bring you back i i think so another one was an owl which i've always ever since i was a kid on our street in the neighborhood i can o always hear an owl hooting but i've never seen one in the wild ever um but i've always heard it and even for some reason that popped into my mind after all of it. And then that, that was painted. When you say you're channeling the painting, are you channeling your higher self? I believe so. Um, most of, I mean, the paintings are pretty decently sized, the other ones, um, but I don't remember painting. Hmm. And, and then I show them to people friends of mine they go oh can you paint me something and i go that's not how it works <laughs> I, it, I can't just sit down and say i want i want you to paint me something this for me it just doesn't work that way i find it even when i even try to paint beyond the channeling i get frustrated but with these there it was so di it's so different my mind shuts completely off and it happens within a half hour to an hour. Do you feel it's like an obsession that you have to paint? No, I've never, I never felt that it was, I'm being compelled to. Um, a couple, I guess when I first started, the very first one was of my dog on top of trying to revive, revive me. Um, that was a compulsion that had to happen. That had to happen. But the others, not so much. So at a point do you say, I feel like painting today. I'm going to go paint, you know, this, what I saw. Mm hmm. Yeah. Do you think this is something that you might pursue as a profession? No, I don't. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, re I don't really think I'm that great, good about it, but based on what they are, I guess they're not supposed to be, but I, I can't see why someone would want someone's very personal things. Well, I guess all art's considered personal, but I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> do you feel inspired by your experience? I do. Um, I've, I came out of it less shy because if I didn't experience this, I would have probably never even considered it being on a podcast, sharing anything. Um, but um, I feel a, a better sovereignty to my self-esteem after it. Um, it definitely put, a different perspective on life. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you up for that? I am, yes. What's the best way for them to reach you? You can find me on Facebook by my name or my email address. Do you feel like you're still in communication with God or Jesus or any of the other beings you encountered during your experience i do yes and, and they come they come through um very vivid dreams what kind of conversations do you have with them um mostly about um i guess it would be considered um predictions um One was um, in the dream, I wake up to 
to a, like a, a vibration. And I go to the window and all at once you could hear like sparrows screaming. And um, it's the more, um, it's the morning of when our society crumbles and we are placed under martial law. You think that's a prediction of the future? Yes. Have you had any dreams that were a prediction of the future that have come true? No, I have not. No. Um, but ever since these dreams, um, the deja vu that relates, that feels connected to them, it always feels, every day seems more greater than the next. I, I, I can't explain it. I really can't explain it. But um, it just feels very how our timeline is going. Have you noticed afterwards any significant coincidences? Um, yes. Yeah. Like what? Another dream was um, nuclear conflict. And then ever since after that dream, and now everything in the news is about nu nuclear conflict. That that to me was is overwhelming, <laughs> almost like too coincidental. All right. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Live life; it's a journey, um, but just don't doubt that there isn't an afterlife. Michael, thank you for that message, and thank you again for sharing your experience with us. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara Podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the Join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.